Listen to this hummingbird. Did you notice the humming sound that gives hummingbirds their name? While humans hum with their vocal cords, a hummingbird's hum is instead made by its rapidly moving wings. Hummingbirds have many special features that make them unique, and we'll explore some of those characteristics in this 360 degree video. It's a great idea to use drawings or words to record your observations, questions, and ideas in a science notebook, nature journal, or piece of paper while you watch. So different are hummingbirds from other birds that long ago, many people thought they were a cross between a bird and an insect. While there are around 350 species of hummingbirds, we'll focus on the Annas and Rufus hummingbirds, two of the most common species in Washington state. Anna's hummingbirds are the size of a ping pong ball and only weigh as much as a nickel, with eggs not much bigger than a pea. But in spite of their small size, some, like our Rufus hummingbird, can migrate over 3,900 miles. One of the most amazing things about hummingbirds is the way they fly. Explore the following video clip, pausing and replaying it as needed. What observations can you make about hummingbird flight? Is it similar or different from the way other birds fly? Follow the pointer fingers to find the hummingbird. Pause the video if you'd like and write or draw some notes about what you saw. We'll watch the video again, this time at one-tenth speed. What did you notice about the way this Anna's hummingbird flies? Unlike any other bird, hummingbirds can hover, that is, remain in one place while flying. And as you saw, they can fly backwards. They've even been known to fly upside down. And since their wings beat at more than 60 times each second, they can really move. In fact, an Anna's hummingbird can fly over 30 miles per hour and can even reach speeds of over 60 miles per hour in a dive. That's as fast as a car on the highway. All of that flying requires a lot of energy. Let's observe how this Anna's hummingbird eats. Did you see the tongue? Pause the video to write down or draw your observations. Let's watch again at one-tenth speed for a closer look. Though hummingbirds also eat small insects, tree sap, and other foods, nectar is a main source of their nutrition, which they mostly get from flowers. They metabolize or use up this sugary food source very quickly in order to keep pace with their high energy lifestyle. For instance, if they weighed the same as an average adult human, they'd have to drink around 150 Coca-Cola sodas a day to survive. That's why they're always eating. In order to consume that nectar, they need to lick at a rate of 15 to 20 times per second. Their tongues are so long that when retracted, they wrap around the inside of the bird's skull. Hummingbirds require so much food, in fact, that at night when they're unable to eat, they actually go into a temporary hibernation called torpor, in which their body temperature drops from the normal level around 107 degrees Fahrenheit to as low as 47 degrees. 
You might have also noticed that these hummingbirds, especially the males, are very brightly colored. See what you can notice about the feathers of the male rufous hummingbird in this next clip. What was the color of the throat of the hummingbird? How did it differ from the colors of other birds you've seen? Let's watch again at one-fourth the speed. Did you notice how the colors on the throat changed in the light, going from black to brilliant red and even to yellow? What do you think is going on here? The feathers of most birds are colored because of pigment or natural coloring. Pigment is the same thing that makes grass green or a yellow house yellow. But pigment isn't the only way to get color. The glittering colors of a hummingbird are created by the physical structure of the feather's surface. Light is refracted by their feathers. In the same way, a raindrop or a prism can split light apart to create the colors of a rainbow. If sunlight hits the feathers at just the right angle, the red light reflects back. If it hits at another angle, then the black color is displayed. By simply turning its head, the throat feathers of this hummingbird are able to go from black to a brilliant iridescent red. What was your favorite characteristic of hummingbirds that we learned about today? If you're wondering how you can help care for these amazing birds, stick around. We have Jenna from the Dungeness River Audubon Center with us to talk about climate change, the effect it has had on Pacific Northwest hummingbirds, and how you can help scientists better understand these impacts. Welcome, Jenna, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Holly. So we are living in a changing world. A warming climate and altered landscapes and habitats can make it difficult for some species to adapt fast enough to ensure survival. And different species have different strategies and might respond to these changes in different ways. Like Holly mentioned, in Western Washington, our most common hummingbirds are Rufus hummingbirds and Anna's hummingbirds. Now, historically, both of these species were migratory, spending the winter further south in warmer areas and arriving in Western Washington at the start of spring to take advantage of the nectar from recent flower blooms to fuel their breeding season. In the past few decades, Anna's have adapted and changed their survival strategy by sticking around Western Washington during the winter months as well. Is it because the climate is warming and the winter conditions are more suitable for these little birds? Or is it because more people have taken an interest in putting out feeders for hummingbirds? Or planting exotic plants in their yards and gardens that provide a sugar and nectar source throughout the winter? Scientists are still working on finding the answers to these questions. Rufus hummingbird, on the other hand, have continued to travel back and forth between their winter and breeding grounds. Timing their migration with the flower blooms they depend upon for nectar. With warmer temperatures, plants that hummingbirds rely on may bloom earlier. What kind of impacts might that have on Rufus hummingbirds? Will they be able to change their pace of migration to adapt? Or will they find a new source of nectar during this important time in their life cycle? These are all questions that scientists are working on answering, and you could contribute by sharing data and observations through Audubon's Hummingbirds at Home program, where community scientists document hummingbird feeding behaviors, noticing the hummingbirds in their own yards and neighborhoods, what are the hummingbirds feeding on, uh, when does feeding occur? Your observations can help scientists determine if these birds are changing their feeding behavior and how they're adapting to the changing world that we all share. If you'd like to contribute or learn more about the project, check out their website, www.hummingbirdsathome.org. 
Thanks, Jenna, for helping us better understand the impact of our changing world on hummingbirds. To learn more about hummingbirds, check out the websites of the National Audubon Society and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. And don't forget to watch for our next 360 video. Happy bird watching!